All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back today. Yes, folks, you saw the title correctly. Wait, I'm supposed to shill for revised. I can't talk about when it goes down. Oh, Bob's mad. Lumberg. Okay, revised cards, ladies and gentlemen. The revised to the moon diamond hands is cooling off. Revised is finally stabilizing. It's finding its kind of sweet spot, and it's actually quite interesting. So let's look at the data here. So you've got all the big boys, the flying castles, kingdoms, snowballs, and channels, and everything. Um, they've all lowered their buy list between 30 and 50%, with an average buy list reduction price of around 40%. Now what's interesting about this is, if you look back at the peak about 60, 90 days ago, um, the buy list on certain of these, like, card castles, man, I mean, these things, they had buy list of, like, Underground Sea Revised for, like, $1,000, I think it was. No, they were selling them near mint for $1,200. And I think the buy list was between 800 and 1,000. It was massive. It was wild. Um, from what I gather, some little birds that may or may not work there and may or may not be legitimate, they claim that they received so many buy list orders for revised cards that they were essentially forced to lower the buy list on the company's website. Uh, also reached out to a friend that uh, really awesome things. And, of course, the big snowballs at Moon City. Um, some people there, which I'm sure they don't. It's all fake anyways. And they claim the same thing. The amount of people submitting buy lists for revised cards was an all-time high. So they were forced to lower the buy list down because they started accumulating so much inventory. Um, you know, kind of the higher-ups and boss man was kind of like, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, lower the buy list. This is a little much. We don't need to put everything we own in the company in revised cards. So that's interesting. So essentially, a lot of people believe the reserve, uh, reserve list revised and non-reserve list revised cards have peaked. There's, there's a kind of a consensus that there's so many of them, prices can't hold, and a lot of people locked in profits. Nothing wrong with that. Now here's the kicker of the video. What's interesting is the buy list dropped, but the prices on the secondary market haven't moved. What's interesting, if you look at like even like on, what's a good example? I guess we can pick on the underground seas and tropical islands and volcanics, but the actual near mint. And light played, you know, SP LP condition cards that are actually listed on eBay TCG Player haven't really dropped much. They're still, you know, light played stuff is averaging on some of these dual lands still five six hundred, and near mint is like seven to nine hundred. It's still interesting on like underground seas, and everybody likes to point to that because it's the most expensive, and everybody likes to point to plateau because it's the cheapest. So what's interesting is the actual market price of orders going through is really not regressing backwards. It's really not kind of undoing itself. It's actually holding surprisingly well. I thought for sure, watching this in the last couple of weeks, we would see more of a, a retracement on the actual sold prices on the market, and we're not. And I, I was kind of waiting and waiting. I said, okay, well, we'll wait till April rolls over, then I'll make a video. Let's see what happens here. And so we had this, this, this kind of disparity where we had so many people sold and locked in profits, these big companies, they were kind of got swamped with it, so they lowered their prices. Of course, when a company lowers their buy list prices, it essentially funnels orders away, kind of thing. It kind of reduces the amount of people that are willing to sell. In other words, instead of pulling it down, which I don't think you're ever going to see the buy list disappear again because of what happened, essentially they just lower the price. I think everybody learned their lesson from 2020. You will never in the rest of your life, all of us living and watching this video, will ever see the big boys pull their buy list down again. That was a black swan event, ladies and gentlemen. You will never see it again. Because essentially they realized, crap, we should have just lowered the prices and kept it active. And instead of being into emotional panic mode. So I wanted to point that out. Another good example, let's take like Wheel of Fortune. That was kind of my big speculation. That was my big favorite card, not more so the dual lands. And I thought that thing was going to head to $1,000. I think it's worth $1,000. Haven't changed my opinion on that. No, I don't sell reserveless cards. Haven't changed my opinion on that. I still like the card. And what's interesting is we're seeing those near mint cards still about five, 600 range. So they have gone down from their peak when the near mint ones are pushing that 800, 900 range. So you have seen a 30% haircut, nice big chop off the price on cards like Wheel of Fortune. Even the cards that are like Copy Artifact, uh, Fork, Vizum and Doppelgangers, maybe like the Monovolts, uh, uh, probably especially the Uncommons, the Soul Rings, Demonic Tutor, since the supply is higher, they probably had bigger price swings. So I want people to know, in my opinion, based on where we are right now, and again, Guy in a basement, no job, tacos for a living, gets a coupon on a haircut. My opinion, if you missed out 
on any form of revised cards and you actually want to have positions in those cards long term, moving forward, I would recommend start actually getting some into the market. Don't go all in. Don't be the hero. But I would say something like, you know, if I wanted a set of revised duels or even a complete set of revised, I would probably start picking up like one dual land a week or one dual land a month and slowly just start averaging as the market kind of upticks, downticks, and bounces around to kind of average out kind of all the price swings. Um, since we are well off the highs on some of those cards, any, it's like on Wall Street. You know, if you like the stock at $1,000, if the stock goes to 700, 30% off, do you just don't like the stock anymore because there's a 30% off sale? It's the same concept. If you feel the company on Wall Street is a legitimate thing and you feel they're going to stand the test of time, and you feel it's just a market adjustment or emotional swings or, or just inflow outflow or you know negativity or whatever it is, those are the times to make your move. Those are the times to reevaluate of what kind of positions you want. For example, you know, in the revised situation, if you were watching these things go to a thousand dollars a dual land, Rudy says Wheel of Fortune a thousand, whoa! And now it's coming back down and it's trying to find its equilibrium balance. You know, yes, it's never gonna go back to the previous lows of a year ago, but you know, you can start building positions moving forward. I do the same thing when it comes to equities on Wall Street. Even if you're trying to accumulate a corporate bond or shares of anything, that's usually the way to do it. If you want a thousand shares, don't run to the stock market or whatever broker you're using and place a market order for a thousand shares. You always go in, say, okay, I want a thousand shares. What's the price? $20 a share? Okay, let's put a limit order in at $19.99 and let's get executed for a hundred shares. And then maybe buy a hundred shares every once a week. Or if you have, you know, I guess, well, most brokers are no commission now. So I guess you could literally buy 20 shares every morning when you wake up for literally, what, two, three, four, five weeks to get to 1,000 shares. So that's a lot of what, that's usually how I recommend doing it. Because there's going to be moments you're going to pay too much. There's going to be other moments where you got a crazy deal and you can't beat yourself up saying, Rudy, I need the best moment. Ah, I should have put all 1,000 shares at that moment. No, I should have sold at that. You can't do that. Life doesn't work that way, folks. You can't get in at the perfect price. You're not going to be able to sell at the perfect price. And that is a Timmy fallacy. That, that leads to just, you know, analysis paralysis. You can't do that. You're going to overanalyze everything, and you're never going to do anything. So that's kind of my speech. I wanted to at least do a follow-up, because I kind of let Revise kind of do its thing for a while, and I want to just kind of see. Now that we're seeing kind of instead of Revise going like this, we're seeing more like this, and some cards are back down like this. Some are straight. Some are just kind of a... You're seeing all those movements. But I feel like the parabolic, extreme, exponential jumps are over with and revised. I think we're going to start seeing more calmness in that particular sector, which I don't think is a bad thing. I think any form of after, you know, very big movements, you need to see at least a one to three month cool off and consolidation period where you can find that new balance, you know. And I, and I, I think that's okay. So I want to lay that out there. I haven't changed my opinion. Still love revised. And by the way, if you want to talk about revised sealed product, forget it. If you can find a box for under 20 grand, just buy it. You can't get sealed revised. And if you want to find a, a brick, one of these, uh, do I even have the brick? One of these bricks, the, the starter decks in Revise, forget it. Anything, I think, was it like 25000 or less is a good deal? You can't even find the stupid things. They're just gone. Um, remember, I think what the print run is 75%, was it 75% boosters and 25% starters? So those things are just ridiculous to find. So I just want people to know that. And um, just remember, you got to hold on, you know, stay the course. And as we move forward, you know, everything goes in ebbs and flows. You know, the market doesn't move in straight lines. You have extreme movements. You have calm periods. You're going to have bear markets. We're going to experience all these things that we all have in the last five years on YouTube. We've seen the reserve list tank in 2018. We've seen everything skyrocket in 2017 and 2020 and 2021. You know, you're going to, that's just the way the world works. Things don't just evenly make 10% a year. Usually you have years that's negative 10 and then a 0% year. Then you have one year that's 30%. So it does average 10% of you. You have to remember that, folks. And, you know, when everyone's skyrocketing, everybody gets FOMO. When things are flat and quiet or retracing 10, 20, 30%, nobody wants to do anything. So just want to lay that out there, folks. So if you don't have anything in that, uh, I, I do still think long-term the, uh, the revise is going to be a good place to be. And I think it's going to continue to do well. I think Al ABU, especially Alpha Beta, I think Arabian Nights, Antiquities, Legends will continue to get so expensive that it's just going to outprice the average person who is into magic in the future, and it's just going to be in a very few select hands. Uh, I think Revise will be more of the uh, the player's versions of actually being able to enjoy some of these older cards without extreme prices. Uh, just to touch on it, because I know everybody always asks, yes, there's a chance in the future, 
that fourth edition and fifth edition and ice age these other ones do continue but just remember whenever we have these more cool off periods or consolidation um the third tier reserve list cards you know funky ice age reserve list homelands and fallen empires reserve list cards you know those are the type of cards that are going to take the biggest percentage haircuts you're not going to see a lot of you know alpha shipment dragons tanking in price but you are going to see a retracement in price on revised and fourth edition Shiv and Dragons. You see my point? Same thing. You're not going to see an Alpha Soul Ring tank in price. But you're going to see a revised Soul Ring that has a bazillion. You're going to see easily if a lot hit the market, everybody undercuts each other. So that's all I have to say. Just wanted to do a follow up here on revised. I know I haven't talked about it in a while. I kind of wanted to let it be and focus on other things. But I just want people to know the prices have come down. If you missed out before, just like in 2018, don't rush out and be a crazy person, but from this point forward, probably in April, all the way through the end of the year, I would, if you don't have any exposure to that type of thing, I would, and you enjoy the cards and you want to collect them, this would be something I would recommend that people who enjoy the cards actually start collecting and, you know, go back and the cards you missed out and slowly buy into it. Remember, just take your time. This stuff's been around for 20, 30 years. It's going to be around another 20, 30 years. So, that's all I got. Have a good day.